Hola a todos, sean bienvenidos a Fusion Learning FX. Hoy veremos algunos de los efectos visuales y técnicas aplicadas en la realización de la película La Pasión de Cristo o también conocida como La Pasión. La Pasión de Cristo es una película de drama estrenada en el año 2004. Su director fue Mel Gibson. La película está creada de acuerdo a los evangelios canónicos, también se basa en otros textos devocionales. Fuera de todo esto, la película sorprendió por su alto realismo y escenas sumamente fuertes. A continuación te mostraremos cómo es que se realizaron algunas de estas escenas en las cuales se aplicaron y realizaron técnicas de efectos visuales. He, he's barefoot, uh, he gets hit two or three more times and thrown off the side of a bridge. And you just slowly start to add these elements of deconstruction. Oh! <laughs> What was born out of this film for the makeup artist is a, a new technique. We had to have a technique that the actor could be mobile in, could work in, and most importantly, a makeup application that we could do in a timely fashion. If we have an actor in facial prosthetics, full body prosthetics covering every inch of his flesh, a beard, a wig, dentures, you start to add up all these elements and you start to add up time. And when you're doing that 25 days in a row, you can't have eight and 10 hour makeups. You'll never sleep. The makeup times in this thing are as long as eight hours, as short as three to four hours. Depends what we're doing. If we're doing the scourging scenes, it's eight hours. If we're doing the regular makeup, it's three to four hours. We ended up developing a technique based off of a temporary tattoo idea. It's a three-dimensional prosthetic that is transferred to the skin via water. And these prosthetics are attached to giant sheets of paper and we had this special chair that we constructed for Jim. And that way we could get around his entire body. We could get the front, the back, behind the legs, the front of the legs, around the arms, and we were able to take these giant sheets of prosthetics that were attached to paper, stick them on his body, wet it with water, and then peel off the paper, and all these pieces were attached to his body. And it cut the process down of what would normally, we kind of guesstimated, would have been an eight-hour makeup down to about a two-hour makeup. There were moments when, um, just for whatever reason that day, the weather wasn't in our favor. Uh, he'd be in this entire makeup after the finished process, and we were unable to shoot. So rather than remove him out of the makeup, he would go home and sleep in his makeup. Literally just his body torn up looking in his face, all, you know, scraped and his eyes swollen. And, uh, and sure enough, the next day he would come in, everything would be great. And, We'd start our day. Those nights were really nice because we actually got more than two hours sleep, so that was good. We got this guy Tony Bertarelli on the set one day, and he came in late in the picture because he replaced another actor who had to leave. And um, he was just walking down to the set, smoking a cigarette in his Pharisee outfit, you know, a cup of coffee, cigarette. He's walking down to the set, and he bumped into Jim in the parking lot in his full getup, and it actually it stopped him. And he had dropped his coffee and everything, and he was just stunned into a complete like a stupefied state and he, he talked to me about it later it was he said it was just astounding it was like it was like reality and and make-believe all got melded into one for a minute and he was transfixed for you know 30 seconds where he couldn't do anything and then uh, so that that was the impact that Jim's appearance had on someone who had absolutely no uh, notion of what was around the corner and this was a mature guy you know Uh, you know, 55 years old, who was like completely gobsmacked into, into, you know, paralytic silence. You know, it was like never view a cut, never view a cut. Everybody's focal point was the scourging sequence. How do you take somebody? who is complete and whole with their body and flesh and remove chunks of it and do it right there on screen. A uh, character who has been so tortured and beaten at this point and so broken down as a human yet still has the desire to move forward and, uh, and we had to show that. We had to make it sympathetic. I think one of the biggest struggles was trying to make this makeup 
as real as possible and at the same time make sure that there was still a human element, something that the audience could connect to. As much as we knew about the makeup effects techniques that create realistic skin qualities, it still wasn't enough. I approached Steve McAvity and said, what if we take visual effects and combine the two? You know, you'd put the lesions or the, the scarification on and uh, it would be pretty livid. And, uh, you know, the guy wouldn't actually have a flagellum sort of ripping the guy's flesh off or anything. He would just kind of fake it. And uh, we'd have to cover up the wound with computer-generated skin. And then as the flagellum would come through, you'd actually reveal the wound that was already on him. So it was kind of like the reverse of what most people would have done. Yeah, you feel a little yeah. bit too far away right now. Too far? <laughs> How's that? Yeah, that I believe. Is that good? You can yeah. control it pretty good. I'm not really giving it too hard, like, when I'm selling it. Yeah. The actors were always just holding this much of a, uh, um, of a whip, never even came close to him with the leather straps or the talons that were on the end. We brought back the actual props and made playback loops of the chosen takes so that he could see what he was doing. Then here in front of a green screen, we had a puppeteer in various, almost sometimes almost comical positions to try to get himself out of the shot, puppeteering what the actors were doing. It also gave us real lighting, real gravity, the tines interacted with each other. None of that has to be programmed or specifically animated. And at the end of the day, we've got seven or eight elements for seven or eight shots done. Whereas if we tried to do that with CG, we would have been at it for weeks. Mel would come to us and say, hey, I have this idea for a shot, and you know, I, I want to do this thing that we now refer to as God's POV. The teardrop thing was about the most difficult thing, but Keith really shone in that because it, that was a very difficult effect. It required that the lens actually weep, you know, that the drop form right on the image and break away from it. So I got together with Francesco Fruggeri, the production designer, and in the back lot at Cinecittà, we mocked up the top of the hill the way it had been in southern Italy in the, in the town of Matera where most of the crucifixion was shot. Then from a 150 foot crane, we shot a live action plate looking straight down, three crosses, horses, just everybody that you see in the finished film. Then back at Captive Audience in California, we built a miniature landscape of a combination of the conceptual artwork and the aerial reference photographs that I had shot at the end of production. The live action was reduced and, and matted into the center and blended in with uh, matte painting work. The distortion and the subsequent teardrop that you see is one of only three CG elements that there are in the film. A really nice thing about this shot is that no one ever seems to talk about it being an effect. No one ever says, wow, that was a great looking miniature or nifty looking CG. Everybody talks about the concept of, was that God's tear? Is that a raindrop? Is that God's tear? Is God crying? Is that what causes the earthquake? I take that as, as quite a compliment because people don't seem to think about the technical aspect of it. It somehow um, doesn't strike you that it's a special effect. You know, um, but indeed it is. And that and, and the drop at the end, you know, when it hits the ground and kicks up the dust and the sound kicks back in and stuff. But that was a very specific vision I had. And they got really very close to what I'd imagined. Dale like si te gustó o ayudó el video. Suscríbete a nuestro canal de YouTube. Síguenos en nuestras redes sociales y nos vemos en una próxima sesión. Muchas gracias.